So how do we print the custom profiling chart for the free photo speed profiling service? Well, hello and welcome to this photo speed video with me, Tim Jones. Today, what I'm gonna be looking at is a video that I've been meaning to do for a long time and that is update how to print the custom profiling charts for our free profiling service. Now, I did some videos a couple of years ago when I first started out on YouTube and things doing these videos and they're okay, but I thought it's about time we updated them go through new features that Apple have introduced as well, and also some Windows-based features as well, that things have changed a little bit because I remember doing them on the old uh, P600 from Epson, and now we've got the nice shiny new P700 here, but also we've had updates from Canon as well, from the 10s and 100s to the Pro 200 and 300. Not too much has changed kind of Mac-wise, apart from their new update Ventura, but I'll be running through that as well. But PC-wise, it's very similar. What has changed though is a few media types and a few options we need to kind of think about and also kind of action. And also where some little things have moved about very slightly as well. But I'll be running through all that. I have chaptered this video as well. So please just use the chapters at the bottom. Not quite yet though, but in a minute, you can use the chapters at the bottom just to skip to the part that you need, be it on, your, on a Mac or a PC, or you're using uh, Monterey or you're using Ventura on a Mac or something. Just skip to that part of the video. Please don't sit through all the PC and Windows version if you're on a Mac, you don't need to. But before I dive in and get started about how we go about profiling these charts and getting everything up and ready, as always, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Just click that subscribe button at the bottom. Also, sign up to our newsletter on photospeed.com for all the latest news from Photospeed and also exclusive special offers as well on papers and things. I'm going to be reviewing and things. Everything now, discount codes and things like that comes through the newsletter. So have a subscribe of that and just keep up to date with everything we're doing here at Photospeed. Also, don't forget to download the Photospeed Art of Printing, which is the free ebook from Photospeed. And that gives you absolutely everything from turning on your printer to profiling, like we're going to be covering today, to framing and mounting and bookmaking, and absolutely everything in between. So it's well worth a download, even if you're a beginner or you're a uh, a seasoned professional uh, printing. There's hopefully something in there for everyone. So just download it and give it a read. Okay, so let's dive in to making custom profiles. So if you're watching this video, we're probably looking at having custom profiles made, which is the free service we offer here at Photospeed. Now, for those who have looked at custom profiles before, or for those who kind of are just diving into the world of custom profiles. Basically what a custom profile does, it tells your printer how to produce color set out by a predetermined set of values set out by the International Color Consortium, the ICC, hence why they're called ICC profile. So this gives you two things. It gives you predictable color and it gives you color accuracy as well. So when you have custom profiles, it's half the battle in a way, because we know that when you've got custom profiles made, then your printer will be producing the best color it can, and also predictably as well. So when you produce a black and white, it's not coming out horrible and green and things like that. But to do that, what we need to do is print off a chart like this. Now this is our color management chart, and it's got loads of patches on it, 924 in fact. And when we print this off, basically, we can then scan it on a spectrophotometer and that will give us an idea of how your printer produces color. And then it will make alterations based on the color information and the paper choice as well that you've made. And it, it saves that data within the ICC profile file that you can use then when you come into print. Now, printing this chart, we have to do a few things. The first thing we need to do is we need to print it through a little bit of software called the Adobe Color Print Utility, because that's the easiest way to print it that we've found. 
and we need to print it without any color management being affected. So we don't want any profile or generic or custom profile assigned to this chart because that will affect the results. Also, our printers think they're clever. So they have color management built in, some basic profiles built in, some generic profiles that are assigned to the media types that we select in here. So we need to turn that off as well. And there's a few different ways we can do this as well, depending if you're on an Epson or on your, if you're on a Canon. So in this video, like I said, I've kind of covered both. So please just jump to the section you need. Don't watch all the others, unless you're interested and you've got a friend who has got a Windows-based Epson and you're on a Mac and you've got a Canon. But please just jump to that section. But what we're going to be doing is going through how we actually print this chart off. And not so much what we do, my our end and how we create the profile. I will I hopefully put that in at the end, but more about how we print this off. Because if we get this right, then hopefully then our printing should be a little bit easier and make our life a little bit easier and also get closer to that goal of just being able to click print. Because a custom profile is a big step in the right direction to just being able to go file print and getting great prints out of your printer. Okay, so let's dive in. I'm gonna start with the Mac, and then we're gonna dive in and how we go about actually printing this chart. Let's start with the Mac, and then I'll move on to the PC. So here I am with my Mac. Now, this version of my Mac is actually on um, Catalina. So a few OS's back. Now, this applies to Catalina, Big Sur, and Monterey, oh, and everything previous to that as well. I'm going to be doing a whole section on Ventura, the new operating system, because that is slightly different and things just look a little bit different. But the first part of it is exactly the same. The first thing we need to do is we need to go on to photospeed.com and we need to download the Photospeed profiling pack and the Adobe Color Print Utility. Now, the easiest way to do that is to click on the support section, which is just up right in the top right of the website, and it just says support. And we just click on that, and that will take us to the support section. Now, within here, we have a section that says color management, and we also have a section that says free custom profiles, which is here. Now we need to click on, first of all, custom profile impact. Now I'm just gonna pop these on my desktop, but you can save them wherever you like. I pop them on the desktop just for ease of use. And the Adobe Color Print Utility as well. Again, I'm just gonna save that onto the desktop. And that's all we need from the PhotoSpeed website. The rest of everything it, we've downloaded everything and that's going to have everything we need in. So I'm just going to minimize my browser now and you'll see I've got two files. I've got one saying PhotoSpeed Color Print Utility and the other one saying PhotoSpeed Custom Profile Impact. But I need to unzip these and make sure that everything's there. So if I just double click on the Profile Impact, then I will get the Profile Impact 2022 come up. And in here, I've got a list of media types. So this is a document that basically lists all the equivalent media types on Epson and Canons to use with all our different papers. I've got a profile booking form, which is what we need to include with the charts when we send it in to, to us here at PhotoSpeed. So I've also got profiling instructions as well here. Now that takes you through step-by-step step in written form what I'm talking about today. And also I've got this funny looking print, this TIFF file here called a TC9.18 RGB ISIS A4 TIFF. Now this is the chart. This is our profiling chart that we need to print. If we click on it, it more than likely try and open in Photoshop. But what we don't want is we don't want to open it quite yet because we need to open it in the print utility. So I'm just going to leave the profiling pack open just there, just so we've got a visual, visual cue for it. Now I'm just gonna unzip the other file here, which is the Adobe Color Print Utility. 
Now, within the Adobe Color Printing Series, when we open the folder, we are presented with two options, a CPU for PC, a CPU for Mac. We need the Mac version because we're working on a Mac. So if I just double click on that one, then what happens is we get this DMG file, file here. Now this is a file that basically is a bit of a compression file for Apple. And what we need to do is just double click on it and then it will uncompress this and it will open another kind of window for us. So it gives us three files. We've got a readme text, a user license agreement, and we have the Adobe Color Print Utility with a blue icon. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna double click on the blue icon. Now, very common, because this is such a bit of old program from Adobe, basically what happens is when we first double click on it, it basically says it's, it can't be verified. It's, it's not from an identified developer, but because it's such an old program, Apple no longer include it in the list of programs that are okay. So we've got two options, cancel or move to bin. If we ever see this message, just click cancel. Now, there are some sites and things that will tell you that it's you can't access the print utility and we can't kind of go through it and access all the, the features and things now, but you can. If you right click on it or control click on your Mac, it will bring up the uh, sub menu. If we click open, what will happen is, it may not happen the first time, I will say that, but it, it should happen. If you do it a couple of times, you should get this box up here. And it basically asks you to move to bin, open or cancel. On Big Sur and Monterey, the box looks slightly different, but you should have the same options in there. What we wanna do is click open. Now, it usually appears like nothing's happened, like we haven't really got anything happening, but, I have just behind, if I close this window with those three files and also close this one here, you will notice that I've got another box open and it says cancel or open at the bottom here. Now this is where we can go into our desktop, our profiling pack and double click or just click and then click open on the chart and that will open the chart for us. And we know it's open because it's quite small in the top left and it says Adobe Color Print Utility across the top. If for any chance you don't get that box that says open or cancel in, so what you have to do is basically make sure you click on the blue icon in your dock that's appeared, which shows the programs open. We just click on it. Again, it looks like nothing's happened. However, if you look to the top left, we have Adobe Color Print Utility. That has come up in our top left. So the program's open. We just haven't got anything open in the program. So if we click on File and then Open, now we get a box that's asking us, it used to say down the bottom here, please select a TIFF file to open, but they took that away. Basically, this is asking us to locate this TIFF folder. So we need to navigate to where that's saved. In my case, that's Desktop. Profile Impact 2022, and then the TIFF file, and just double click on it, then that should open for you. That's the hard bit done. The next bit is pretty straightforward because if you're on a Mac, the next part kind of happens all for you in a way, but there's a couple of settings we need to check and need to kind of be aware of. So the first one is we need to go File, and then we need to go into Page Setup. Now we need to make sure we're on A4, and we've got our printer selected. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go through the, uh, P the Epson, the P700 first, and then I'll go through the Canon in a second. So we just need to make sure we've got the Epson selected. Now this is the same on all Epsons. So um, be it if you've got the 600, the R3000 things, it will all look the same for you. Now, paper size is on A4 which is great, that's what we need the chart printed on, so we're gonna click OK. Now, we're gonna be printing a chart on each of the papers we'd like to be profiled. So we will be switching between photo black and matte black if your printer has it. So we need to tell the printer, first of all, to turn off color management because the Adobe Color Print Utility disables all profiles anyway. But what we want to do is uh, make sure we've got no color management on and also we've got 
a media type selected as well that we recommend. And that can where this media type document comes in and you can just read off the media types off that document. If I go file print, what happens is we get what we call a driver window up. Now this is what we, where we select basically our media type. So if we click on layout, we get a lovely drop down menu. I should say actually, if you have, if you ever click on file or print and you're presented with a small window like this one here, if you click on show details, it will expand it for you and you'll get all the lovely options in there. So now on layout, if we click there, we, it, is a drop down menu and we've got some options in here. Color matching, this is the color management side of things. If we click in here though, we should see it's grayed out because when we print through the Adobe Color Print Utility, the profile's disabled, but also it tricks the Mac into disabling the printer's color management as well, which is a really great little feature, it makes it nice and easy for us. So we don't need to worry too much what's in there. The only other thing we need to do is go into print settings and we need to tell the printer what type of media we've got in there. So I'm gonna print a print on our Luster. So we're gonna select the Epson Premium Luster photo paper in here. And we're gonna put it on high quality. And that is the settings we need. So we just click print and we can print that out. Now, if I was printing on the natural soft textured, say, a uh, textured matte paper, I'd go in and look at the media type selection, and then I know that it's going to be a fine art matte, and it's going to use the matte black ink. So always refer back to that document, which is in the profiling pack here, which is all the lists of different media types we need. And I've tested as well. And you just read it off, say, okay, I'm on an Epson and I have the natural soft textured, which should be around here. And here it says Epson archival matte. Now I know that that setting, Epson archival matte, is just here. So we can use that setting in there. And we can select that and then we can select our quality option. So I always say one down from the top, 1440 DPI is absolutely fine. And then we can just click print and get that printing. So now let's look at Canon. Now I've selected a Pro 300 here and nothing's really changed. The only thing that changed is instead of print settings, we've got something called quality and media now, but everything else should be pretty much the same, to be honest. Color matching should be grayed out. And that means that color management and profile and everything has been turned off. In quality and media, this is where we select our media type. So this will be different again. So if we're printing on say the natural textured that I have here, we can have a couple of choices. We can select the matte photo paper or the one I recommend if you have it is the heavyweight fine art paper. And that should be all listed on that media type documentation. And then also we've got luster and semi-gloss for say the brighter type of papers and the lusters and pearls and such. So those are the media types we need to select when we're looking to print one of these charts. And it's as simple as that. The quality um, we will just need to put on high or highest in the case of the Pro 300, just pop it on highest. We're putting everything through the top feed. The rendering tab, that should be all grayed out. Obviously we don't want the black and white photo print ticked because we want it to print in color. And then we just click print and then it will print a chart off for us. Before I finish up, I want to just bring your attention to something that could happen. That when you click on this drop down here, you may not see all these options. Now this usually will refer to the printer being installed as what's called an air print device. So when the printer is installed as an air print device, if we click on just the drop down, we'll get some very limited options. If we go into print settings, we will just have some very, very limited options in here, which is a telltale sign that something's not installed correctly. Now, this will cause us some problems with color management. 
So what we need to do at that point is uninstall the printer in system preferences and reinstall it. Now I've done a quick video on that as well. I'll put a link in the description. Um, but that's a, a telltale sign that something isn't quite right. But that is really how we print the chart, to be honest. The hard bit's getting the chart open. We download the profiling pack, open everything up, and then we just go file print, select our media type, and then click print. And then hopefully we should have a chart coming out of our printer. Now this chart should look a lot darker than the one on the screen. If it looks like the one on the screen, there's probably some color management going on. If you're on a Mac, the first thing I would check is that driver and if you've got AirPrint installed. Otherwise, if it comes out nice and dark, all you'll need to do then is go into the profiling pack, get the profile booking form, this one here, fill it, print it off, fill it all out and post it into the address at the bottom down here for us. And then we can get it all profiled for you. So that's how we print it on the Mac operating systems before Ventura. So now let's go into Ventura and I will show you how to do it through the new operating system of Ventura. So here we are in Ventura. Now, nothing's really changed. What I've done is I've gone onto the PhotoSpeed website, I've downloaded the Adobe Color Printivity and the custom profiling pack and they're both sat on my desktop here. So when we double click on the blue icon now, we will get a slightly different box than we had on Catalina or Monterey, etc. Um, and we'll get an eject disk and a cancel still. So we just need to click on cancel. And then we need to do that same process again of clicking, right clicking on the blue icon or control clicking or command clicking and then clicking open. And then we'll have a different box pop up and we'll have the option to open now. And when we click on that, then it will take us to where we need to select the profiling chart and find the profile impact. It's actually found it for me already, but if not, we might just need to navigate to the desktop profile impact and the chart there and then click open. Now, if nothing comes up like this, if you go down to your dock and just click on the blue icon here, then the chart will appear for you. I'm not too sure why it does that, but sometimes it's a little bit hidden. You just click on the blue icon in the dock and it should appear for you. Okay, now everything is pretty much the same. It just looks slightly different. So in page setup, again, the box has changed slightly. So we'll start on the Epson here. So I'm going to click on the Epson. We've got A4 selected and portrait. We don't want any scaling, so that's going to be at 100%. And we're just going to click OK. Now I'm going to go into print. So in print, this is going to bring up the print dialog or the driver options. Now you can see here it's slightly different. We haven't got that drop down menu that we used to have in the middle, but instead we've got these little tabs. And if you click on the arrow at the side, you can expand each one of these to give you more options. So what we're concerned about is the printer options tab. So we can pop that in there. Now, if we click on color matching, this should be all grayed out, perfect. Now, the only other thing we need to do is set our media type. So in print settings, we just click on the little eye here, and then we can select our media type depending on what we're using. If we're using a fine art matte or a luster or gloss, we can set that in there. The other thing we need to do is just set our print quality. I go get quality options and just pop it one down from the top. So we're just on 1440 DPI and then we can click OK, and then we can click Print. So once we've clicked Print, we'll print the chart out. OK, so now let's switch over to a Canon. So once we've switched over to the Canon, what we need to do is go into our color matching. And you may notice in here, it's a little bit of a glitch. I don't know, it doesn't seem to happen with Epsons. It seems to happen with Canons that I have seen. But on Ventura, that sometimes you'll see, this is grayed out, meaning everything's turned off. However, we are on Canon color matching here instead of color sync. I'd normally like to see it on color sync. However, it's grayed out, so it should be all turned off for us. A little, little bit of a glitch on the Canon driver with Ventura. This means that when we go in to do our print settings in quality and media, and we set our media type, 
we can sometimes see this rendering intent option highlighted. And what we need to do is just change this to no color correction in here. If you, if you can, it may be grayed out. If it's grayed out, perfect, leave it, because it means it's turned off. But if you can go in the drop down and set it to no color correction in here, and that should fix everything for you. And in here, again, we just need to select our media type according to the media type document. So either luster, semi-gloss, or heavyweight fine art if you're using a fine art paper, or you've got your matte photo paper if you haven't got the heavyweight fine art option. So we can just select that, and then we just click OK, and then we can then select print. So not too much of a difference between the two, but enough of a difference to kind of make us question what we're doing. Okay, so that's Ventura. So let's move on to the PC. Okay, so here we are in a Windows-based PC, and we're just gonna go through how to open the chart up and set up the driver and the media types within a PC. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is just click on where it says support at the top on the website again. So we download this part in exactly the same way. So we go down to color management and then we download the custom profile impact and we download the Adobe color print utility. So once they're download, what we need to do is we need to unzip both of these files as well. So we need to just click on your downloads or locate them on your computer. I find the easiest way is in the browser to actually just locate them on the downloads in your browser. Then we'll just click open file, then this should open up. And then we should have the profile in pack here with all those four files that we had before. Now what we need to do is extract these because they're zipped. This is a little bit different to the Mac version because on a Mac, it extracts them automatically for you. But on a PC, we do need to just extract these files. So we're just gonna click on extract at the top and then extract all. And then we're just going to make sure that our downloads are the custom profile impact here. Okay, so that one is downloaded and unzipped for us. So we're just gonna close all these windows now and we're gonna go back to our browser. So once we're back in the browser, I'm just gonna click on the Adobe Color Print Utility. Again, I'm just gonna open this up now. What we're gonna do though is click on the PC version instead of the Mac version. And then we're just gonna click through these files until we get these three files up that we had before. And we're just gonna click Extract All, which is just at the top here. And then I'm just gonna extract these. Now, when they're extracted, you should see just a plain ACPU folder come up. We just need to click in here. And then at this point, we should see those three files again. So as these files are extracted, we can actually just click on the Adobe Color Print Utility. And then what will happen is we get another box pop up. And at the top of it, it says, please select a TIFF file to print. So this is where we need to go to our um, downloads and we need to locate the profiling pack, which we've just extracted and downloaded. And in here, we should see the TIFF file. And then we just click open and then the TIFF file opens and then we can start to print. Now, there's a couple of things we need to do. So we just need to click on where it says print setup in here. And this is where we need to make sure we're on A4 and top feed. We'll just click OK. Now, when we click on print, we end up in the print dialog. Now at the minute, I've got the Pro 1000 selected. So we'll start there. So if I click on properties, in the same way we worked on the Mac, we need to tell it which paper we're printing on. So refer to the media type document within the custom profile impact to find out which media type you should be selecting in here, be it luster or gloss or heavyweight fine art in here or matte photo paper. Depending on which paper you have, the media type will change. So in print quality, we need to put it on high or highest. I would probably always say put it on highest. Also make sure we're on A4 and we're in the top feed. Now on a Canon printer, we also need to turn off color management as well, because unlike a Mac, 
where it turns off color management automatically. Now on a PC, we need to turn off color management manually. So there's two ways to do this. So on the main page or the quick setup page, you can click on color intensity manual adjustment. And then what happens is this other box pops up and we need to just go to a tab called matching at the top. And then we just need to select none and that will turn color management off for us. And then we click OK. And then once we've set our media type and quality and everything, we can just click OK. And then we can click OK and then print. Now, the other way to do it, let me just go back into here. And I'll just untick this box is if you don't have a color intensity manual adjustment box in there, which some older Canon printers don't have, you have to go into the main tab and then find color intensity just halfway down on the right hand side here and set it to manual and then click set and then you should get that manual color adjustment box back up. Click matching, select none and then we can just click OK and we're ready to go. And then we can put the paper in and click print. So that's how we do it on a Canon. Let me just switch to an Epson here. So let's go to the P700. I'll just go into properties. It's a little bit more straightforward on an Epson, I have to say. Now this driver window should look the same if you be it on an R3000 or a P600, P700, 900, P800. They should all look very, very similar. So at the top, we have our media type. So that's where we refer to that document and say we're on a matte paper, so we probably set archival matte in here. Make sure we're on color. Level is the quality, so we can max quality in here. Now mode, this is the color management. This is what we need to turn off on a PC when we're printing. So we just click in mode, then we go down to off, no color adjustment. Make sure on the paper, make sure on the rear paper feed, NA4, and very simply, we can just click OK and click print. Now, let me just show you because I've got the P600 here, which is the previous version. Now, this is a very similar driver, as you'll see. So very similar. The really important part is the mode. And we need to set that to off, no color adjustment. Um, make sure that is set. And then we've also got our media type to tell it if we're on a matte black or photo black in there as well. But the really important bit is the mode, no color adjustment. Now, when we create the profiles and print, you will have to turn off this color adjustment every time you print because we don't want two profiles being assigned at the same time, one in the printer and one in your chosen software. So we do just need to be aware of that and we need to set that each time. But once we've got that, then we can just click OK and we will get the print out. OK, so let's do a print and then we'll have a look at it. OK, and here is the chart. It's fitted quite nicely to the page. A little thing is with the Adobe Color Print Utility, it always seems to print off to the left hand side. Do not worry at all. As long as we've got the diamonds down the side here, it will scan absolutely perfectly. Another thing to look out for is it should look a lot darker than the one on the screen as well. I always say look at the green areas down the left hand side here and they should look a bit more like a British racing green rather than the limey green on the screen. If it comes out looking like the one on the screen then there is some colour management being applied in the printer. So you might need to have a look again, look at those boxes, just make sure that you haven't got that air print driver installed if you're on a Mac and make sure also if you're on a PC that you're turning off that color intensity manual adjustment on a Canon or you're turning off the color management under the mode section on your Epson. But if they are coming out like this, so the next stage is to just print the booking form off, which is in the profile impact, and then fill it all out, post it into the address at the bottom. We will scan this chart and create the profile and email it back to you. When we email it back to you, we'll have full instructions on how to install it and how to use it as well. But if you run into any problems or have any questions, we are always at the end of an email or at the end of the phone as well. So I hope that's been useful and it's taken you through how to print a custom profiling chart 
on your printer. Now, like I said before, any problems, we are always at the end of the phone or just drop us an email, we can help. If you are really struggling with this, so we can arrange a time through Zoom to screen share and I can take control and things and we can, I can walk you through it and show you how to do it. But always remember, when you're printing these charts, make sure they come out nice and dark. Don't worry, your prints won't come out dark. It's just for the chart because we've got no color management or profile being assigned. Right, so as always, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. New videos every Thursday coming out. Also, don't forget to download the PhotoSpeed Art of Printing, the free ebook from PhotoSpeed. And also, don't forget to subscribe to our newsletter as well on PhotoSpeed.com, because that will keep you up to date with all the offers we have and any news we have coming from PhotoSpeed as well. So, until next Thursday, bye bye.